So, are we living on a globe? Hey, hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I know it's crazy. Uh, I know it's ridiculous to even ask the question, but hey, let's have fun. Um, and watch this video until the end because this is going to be my methodology. How I'm going to be questioning the globe. And uh, it's pretty much an inquiry about the shape of our world using the seven liberal arts. So this is going to be my methodology. I'm going to use the seven liberal arts. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's going to be a great tool for you also on any topic you want to come to grasp with without relying on authority to tell you what to believe in. So I don't know if I'm going to end up believing in a globe or not. This is going to be a journal. This is going to be a journey. I don't know what's going to come out of it, but it's going to be fun. So it is a mark of a new dick in men to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. And this is Aristotle. This is really good advice. And I suggest to you to just suspend this belief for a second and to just entertain the thought that maybe, just maybe, we are not living on a globe. And that's going to be fun. So the goal is to this project is to do an honest inquiry onto the shape of the earth. And we're going to use the trivium, the quadrivium, and uh, this is just a little reminder of how it works. We have this five senses, five senses, which is used to gather data. Then we use the trivium to organize that data and to create a non-contradictory thinking. And then we use the quadrivium to further our understanding of the world around us. So um, this is going to be my methodology. I'm going to use the trivium. And it's a great method that's been lost for a very long time. And it's very simple. It works like a scork crew, a uh, scork screw. And uh, uh, sorry for my French accent. I hope you can uh, deal with it. But uh, this is going to be uh, my method of grammar, logic, rhetoric. And it only goes in one way. It's always grammar, logic, rhetoric, grammar, logic, rhetoric. And um, I'm not going to read this verbatim because it could be a little boring, but basically general grammar is to ask the who, the what, the where, and the when of a subject to gather data uh, and to organize it into a body of knowledge. Next step, we use formal logic. And formal logic is used to create non-contradictory statement and non-contradictory identification of things. Um, and really, it becomes uh, so much more simple in life when we realize that there is no contradiction in nature. Uh, there can only be paradox coming from a limited knowledge. So nature, if you, for example, look outside and you see an apple fall from a tree, you know that an apple fell. You know, this is reality. Now, when mind of men start to think about why that is, now, that's, this is where we have to uh, question whatever men comes up with uh, to see if there's contradiction. So nature says, apple fall from the tree, that is reality. Now, why that is? Well, we must come up with a logic that is has no contradiction about it. Uh, and uh, we have to work with proof and uh, start from a basic axiom. And the basis of uh, the basic axiom, the basic statement that's going to be this, the base of the whole, this whole project is that reality is real. A equals A. Uh, A doesn't equal B. So basically, uh, you're hearing my voice right now. I am not an hologram or a fragment of your imagination. If we believe that A doesn't equal A, we're in big trouble. Um, we all can be really easily manipulated by someone who can just, um, you know, manipulate us because we're, we're not ready to accept even reality is real. So very important to keep that axiom in mind. And there's rhetoric, which is the application. Um, application could be uh, using the words to express it, to create statement, and to be an orator. It could be the applying applying of the um, of the learning and the logic. Uh, it could be done with music, for example. You can learn the grammar of music. Then you can learn how to uh, uh, get rid of contradiction in music, and then applying it would be the rhetoric. To be playing play music is the rhetoric of music. So um, this is really very important, and 
were not taught that in school, but logical fallacies are virus, and they're not arguments. So the media are littered with logical fallacies, and uh, whenever someone gets really emotional about a topic, uh, that's when they rely to logical fallacy to uh, be proof that they're right. And if anyone in my com in the comments below my video use such fallacies that I'm going to be pointing out, um, I'm not going to answer them. Basically, I don't have time to answer people who are not really to have an open discussion and to ask valid question, and, or sometimes even ask questions that may seem stupid, but they could be pretty profound sometimes. Uh, and I'm going to be uh, teaching you some of those fallacies so you can point them out at them and use that as your own intellectual self-defense to be able to you know, call a spade a spade and say, well, this is not an argument. This is, for example, this is an, an ominum. This is attacking the person. It has nothing to do with whatever the person said. Uh, so, for example, let's say I bring in argument that prove for some weird reason that the Earth is not a globe. Uh, all of a sudden, that rather than person refuting the statement with uh, some proof, with some data, uh, they just attack me. Well, it could be, you know, uh, because of my French accent, or tell me I'm stupid, or things like that. These are not arguments. They're an, an attack on the person. Uh, there's ad veracunium. So rather than bringing data, we could say, uh, well, NASA said, or my teacher said, or my father said. So basically, ad veracunium, appealing to authority, is not an argument. It's a logical fallacy. Uh, appeal to belief or popularity because most people think X, then it's true. Um, confusing cause and effect, so for example, uh, confusing causation and correlation. Uh, coming to uh, AST generalization, that's a good one. So for example, uh, we say, well, everyone around me are Asian and they all have slanted eyes. Therefore, everyone in the world has slanted eyes. This is not true. Um, there's also the straw man. So, for example, uh, someone bringing in an argument A, and then the person, uh, the person A has position X, person B present position Y, which is a distorted version of the original position. Person B attack position Y, and therefore X is false. So that's a straw man. Um, and I'm gonna leave a really cool link down below this video if you want to look at it. You know, there's hundreds of them. And once you have them and you watch TV, you won't be able to. You won't be able to hear politician talk. You won't be able to uh, watch news talk because you'll be able to spot it. All right, so I discovered Trivium. Uh, this is a little bit about me. And uh, I'm a web developer and marketer. And with time, I discovered the power of advertising and mind control. And even if I don't have to use those techniques, but I became really aware that um, when we, people want to influence others, uh, very often we use logical fallacies, we appeal to emotion, uh, we use hypnotic language, embedded command, and it's really common practice. Uh, I, I, every time I see, open the TV, anytime I watch the news, I see it. Um, but when it comes to really big ideas, and worldview, the process takes a lot longer and requires years of repetition for a belief or worldview at a really young age to plant the seed so that someone will never question it, ever. Um, the domestication of human done through the school system works fabulously to train human to accept ideas from authority without using their five senses or their own mind, the trivium, for example, to make the difference between reality and on reality. Uh, this is why after discovering the trivia method, which is a tool that's been suppressed for decades and maybe centuries, uh, I decided to take all my belief and put them in a trash can and start anew. And this is not easy, guys. Uh, we just gotta say, maybe, just maybe, everything was told was wrong. It may not be so, but let's just pretend and go from there and use the trivium to rebuild, to have correct knowledge of our reality. Um, so here's an example of how it works in the world. And I don't believe people are actually trying to deceive us. Maybe some, but for example, with expert in academia, 
you know, when someone studied their whole life into a subject, uh, they need to be very sincere and they need to be very well learned. Um, they adopt models. So, for example, in the scientific community, you use a current paradigm and you build on top of it. And sometimes they make wonderful discoveries. Uh, for example, in engineering, it's amazing. Uh, but there's a big issue, um, especially when it comes to worldview and beliefs and uh, sometimes even social science. It could be very dangerous. So, for example, in economics, um, even with PhDs out there and people study for years, well, they promote very dangerous policies uh, and they make predictions which are always wrong. Um, and they can use very impressive mathematics. You know, they could just show us it's how beautiful it's all supposed to work. Um, but then when reality hits, uh, those people don't, miss, don't, don't lose their job because everybody have the same paradigm. Um, and uh, that was the first time I realized that it's not because someone has a PhD and has really fancy metamanic model that I should believe them. Um, I've decided to do this exercise because I do not believe that there's a more fundamental and important question than the shape of her world. Uh, it's my if my conclusions bring me to, uh, for example, the globe, uh, I would actually be pretty happy. So I could just go on and live my life and just agree with the other 7 billion people on this planet. But if it's not, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and uh, note, I'd rather not think about it right now. So, I will do my best to not do the biggest mistake when it comes to applying the trivium, and it's to put my logic before my grammar. So, I will not start by saying the Earth is a globe, or that the Earth is not a globe. I'll just start with data and work from there. Uh, I will not assume the shape of the Earth. Uh, we may use different models that are available out there to make a contrast, but I'm going to not use any theory that accompanies to support those models. I may look at them, but I'm not going to assume anything. And because if I don't, well, I'm not applying the trivium. So that's going to be the scorecard. There's three categories. Either I'm going to come with a uh, positive proof, that's a globe, or I'm going to come up with um, a statement that does either prove nor disprove. So it's like, it really doesn't prove that it's a globe, but it's a so supporting evidence that it's a globe. Uh, and there's proof that it's it's not a globe at all. So we'll see where that scorecard lead me um, over the months ahead. And that's going to be fun. And I hope you're going to join me in that journey to question reality, to see, is it a globe or is it not? And please, just click on subscribe below, become a fan of the journey to discover if we're on a globe or not. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.